Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. And the light of darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness. And shine within your people here.
May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense. And may your presence surround and fill us so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Amen. The light shines in the darkness. And, and the, the darkness, darkness has not overcome it. A reading from the 10th chapter of 1 Corinthians, beginning with verse 1. St. Paul writes, I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea and all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them. The rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them and they were struck down in the wilderness. Now these things occurred to us as examples for us so that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not become idolaters as some of them did, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and they rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did. And 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test as some of them did and were destroyed by serpents and do not complain as some of them did and were destroyed by the destroyer. These things happened to them to serve as an example, and they were written down to instruct us on whom the end of the ages have come. So if you think you are standing, watch out that you do not fall. And a reading from the 26th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, beginning with verse 30. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace. From God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, amen. It was Thursday night. Jesus had just eaten the Passover with his disciples in the upper room. Even more than that, he had just transformed it, giving them a new Passover meal of his body and blood. He had washed their feet. He had spoken of betrayal. It was a night unlike any other and would take a while to digest it all. After singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, a familiar journey to a familiar place. But on the way, more surprise. Jesus speaks about what is going to happen and with an ominous warning, you will all fall away because of me this night for it is written i will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered but peter not yet realizing the full significance and meaning of what jesus said confidently replies no it shall not be though all fall away because of you i will never fall away. You have to marvel at 
maybe even admire such confidence, such a can-do attitude. The problem, though, is that it is a confidence that is not born of faith. It is overconfidence, spiritual pride. For what is Peter saying with his words? Not just that he will remain steadfast, but that Jesus saying, it is written, is wrong. Or Jesus' interpretation of it is wrong. To Peter, it seems very possible that the rest of the disciples might well fall away. But not him. You are wrong, Jesus. Not me. To which Jesus replies, oh yes, you, Peter. In fact, maybe it could even be said that his falling away would be worse than the others. For not only would he fall away with them, but truly I tell you this very night before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. No, you're wrong again, Jesus, Peter insists. Even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. So Peter is saying... God's word is wrong. Jesus is wrong. Peter alone is right. Yes, all the other disciples said the same thing and went along with them who, once they suddenly found their courage, too. But it is Peter who leads the way. Peter, whose spiritual pride is leading him down the wrong path and dangerous path. Could the same thing be said for you and me? Spiritual pride leads us away from the Lord and his gifts and instead exalts me and my strength. And that's what makes it so dangerous and deadly. That's why the scriptures are filled with warnings against such pride. Such pride, which in full growth, can lead us to say, like Peter, God's word is wrong. Jesus is wrong. I am right. We see that actually in no small way in our world today. But is it in us? Is it in you and me? It is. And here's how you know it. Because even as you were hearing those words, you were thinking, I would never have said what Peter said. I would never have done that. I would never do that. Others, maybe, sure, but not me. And isn't that exactly what Peter said? As Paul warned the Corinthians, these things took place as examples for us. They were written down for our instructions. Let anyone who thinks they are standing take heed lest they fall. But there is good news in our reading tonight. It isn't all bad news, for after the shepherd is struck, struck for all of our sins, including our misplaced, overconfident spiritual pride, Jesus continues, after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. After the shepherd is struck on the cross and the sheep are scattered and all looks hopeless and lost, the shepherd will rise from the dead and go find his sheep again. He will gather them to himself in forgiveness and love. He will go before them and take care of them. Yes, they would leave him, but he will never leave them. Not even death will be able to stop him. Peter would soon know that. God's word is right. Jesus is right. I am a poor miserable sinner and Jesus would weep bitterly and in this Lenten season we confess we say the same thing as Peter 
when I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but loss and pour contempt on all my pride. Because the only thing worth anything is not who I am or what I am able to do, but who Jesus is and what Jesus has done for me. His atonement for my sin, his defeating my death, his victory over my hell, his baptism giving me new life, his body and his blood feeding me, his life giving me life. So that we can say with Paul, as he later says in Galatians, far be it from me to boast, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Boasting in the cross of Jesus confesses confidence in the one who not only rose from the dead to life again, but has promised the same for us. It is to confess the one who has gone before us, not just to Galilee, but to heaven, to prepare a place for us. That's what Jesus has promised. And God's word is right. Jesus is right. And I, I am his. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, in heaven Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God. Praise and thanks to you. May God create. 